I'm going to make a game for Vim Jam 2. But since that won't be until next week, I spent this week prototyping some ideas and looking up some mechanics that I didn't fully understand before. But before we get into the video, my name is Helper Wesley, I've made these games, and I make weekly devlogs. I took part in the Vim Jam a year ago and came in 41st place out of 260 some odd games. I didn't really know what I was doing back then, still kinda don't, but this year I want to do a lot better. This year I'm not going to do it alone. I've recruited Lightspeed6 to help me with music and sound design, and an IRL friend of mine to write story bits and give the whole game a structure. And I will take care of the actual putting together of the game, likely using some free art assets to get us further along than we would be if I had to make all the art myself. But that brings us to what I was doing this week. I've basically been preparing for the Vim Jam by testing out some new mechanics and things that I didn't fully understand, or things that I understood but hadn't actually made myself. The last game I made was kind of a depressing, um, great game. I think everybody should play it once, go in blind because it's just go in blind, but it's a little depressing and so I wanted to make this game just pure fun. So I started with trying to make like a fun platformer kind of controls, like where you have like wall jumps and a hook shot and you do like backflips and things and stuff like that. So I started by setting up a little arena to just jump around in. And I started putting detector objects around the player to kind of determine where things are. This is basically what I did in Asteroid Dig, where the character has these three detector objects around them. And then when that's in collision with one of the blocks, then it knows to dig that block away. And I was going to use this to determine when the player was up against the wall, or the ceiling, to like, hang from the ceiling. But then I decided to be a big boy and go read the wiki. Because I hadn't fully understood how to use raycasting, but I know that raycasting can be used to do that sort of thing. And to my surprise, it was actually like, really simple to figure out. It's literally just where the ray starts, and then give it a point where the ray stops. And if that is in collision with the thing that you're trying to detect, then voila! the condition is true, and there you go. So all it took was to set up a ray coming from the center of the player, off towards the side of them, and then when the player touches the wall, using the deactivate behavior event, it then just disables the behavior and you're floating there in midair next to the wall. So that was actually really simple to do. I did try to turn gravity to zero to make them so that when they hit the wall they floated there, but um, the momentum from the jump was still attached to it, so the character would just do this. So I stuck with the character's behavior being disabled. I gave the game WASD controls, because I hate using the arrow keys, and then I played around with a bunch of different like ways to do it so that when the character clings to a wall or the ceiling, things get deactivated and there's like timers and... It was just really complicated. So I then moved down to a less complicated system of states, where the character is 0, not on any walls or ceilings, 1 on the right wall, two on the left wall, or three on the ceiling. And this meant that I could just make it so that whenever you're in one of those conditions, then you specifically have to press either left or right to get off the wall, or down to jump down. So that was all fine and dandy until I tried to do two different things. One was give the character the ability to jump again if they jumped off a wall, and two was to make it so that when you're clinging onto a wall, you automatically slide down a little bit. Both of these things caused major issues but I felt like they really needed to be in there for these, like, controls to be fun. I fiddled with it and fiddled with it and fiddled with it, but the player kept falling through the floor and jumping off to infinity and, like, staying clung to the ceiling no matter what I tried. So I eventually just gave up on it, because the point of this week was to prototype some ideas, not to, like, fully flesh out a game mechanic. But now I have an idea of the time frame required to make this sort of game which is really important when you only have a limited time for a game jam. This base platforming could really be used for a lot of different things, but I did eventually move on to something else. Specifically a top-down game, where the idea was to be something like Enter the Gungeon. So I set up a basic little arena to fight in, put the player down and then some enemies, and then rather than just brute force my way through it, I realized that I should probably just again look up something in the wiki, or look up an example. Funnily enough, I found my own, and who better to learn from than your previous self, I guess. So after brushing up on the mechanics, 
and snagging this arrow icon from the asset library, I set up a mechanic where you click and hold the mouse button to charge up a bow, and then when you release, the arrow is released. And of course, because I know exactly what I'm doing, this worked out fine first try. I tweaked it a little bit and added some zoom, so when you're holding down the key button, the camera zooms out a little bit. And while that looks terrible, zooming out the camera is one aspect of game juice that helps clue the player into what's happening on screen. And this was really easy to make, like this took just like a couple hours in the morning. Now, this could be used for a, a host of different things, from gungeoneering to literally anything where you shoot and have a top-down perspective. For the next little prototype, I wanted to test out the physics system. I've literally never done anything with the physics system at all, so I copied the old prototype from the Gungeoneering one and took out all of the behaviors from before and put in physics behaviors. I got the player moving and nothing was happening. Nada. So obviously the physics engine is more complicated than just slapping on a behavior and boom it works. After I went through the wiki, I realized what I had done wrong, and just took off the behaviors and put them back on again, and changed the gravities to zero so they wouldn't be falling to the ground, and then they were bouncing off each other just fine. I gave the enemies physics-based controls, and then gave them a slight movement speed towards the player. And this happened. A lot of game devs on Twitter and on Discord had a good laugh at it and said that they've done the exact same thing, so at least I'm not alone. Maybe I can save this setting and use it as the Dark Souls of this physics-based top-down game. And so to give the player a bit of revenge, I gave them a weapon. I initially thought of using the basketball icon as something that the player would hit and bounce off of and then bounce that towards the enemies, and then when it hit the enemies it would kill them. Sort of like a game of deadly dodgeball. But as I was doing that, I realized it would actually be more interesting if the ball was attached to the player, so the player wouldn't have to go chase after the ball every time they hit it. I accidentally created like a ball and chain kind of mechanic, and I gotta say it was kinda cool actually. I mean, all this would take is some refining of the speeds and things, and like proper levels built out of course, and you've got a game right there. So that one is a strong contender for something I might do for the jam, depending on what the theme is. Vim Jam 2 is kind of unique as far as game jams go because they released the restriction, the thing that you have to have in the game, which for this one is bosses, a long time ago. So we've all kind of had our heads churning with ideas, and now we have to wait for Friday, September the 10th for when they announce the theme, which is what we're going to base our entire games around. So needless to say, I'm very excited, and I won't be releasing a proper video next week. I'll be releasing a teaser for the work that we're doing, which will be a much shorter video. But then the next week I'll be releasing the full video on the Vim Jam, with timestamps and interesting segues and showing the whole process. So maybe subscribe and click that bell, and then when the video comes out you'll be notified of it. But in the meantime, the links to all the places that I hang out are down below, and if you decide to click on one, then I'll see you there.